Hello and welcome to Jeremy's Retro Bar. I'm Jeremy and this is my Retro Bar. And today we're going to be talking about 1998. And more specifically, we're going to be talking about retro computing in 1998. Now, one of the funnest things about collecting retro computers is the ability to be able to relive the time in which they were made. You set up the computer, you set up the software, and you are pulled back to that time period. But right around the late 90s, a lot of that starts to break down because one of the biggest draws of computing was the internet. Of course, 1998 saw the release of the original iMac, it saw the release of Windows 98, and it saw more and more people going online. And one of the things that we can barely do anymore on an old computer is go online. So today we're gonna to talk about how can we surf the internet like it was 1998. But of course, first, we're gonna to need to make ourselves a drink. So for today's drink, we're gonna stick with the 1998 theme and make the most popular cocktail of 1998. And this seems to be undisputed the number one cocktail of 1998. And that is because in 1998, a certain movie directed by the Coen brothers starring a character known as the Dude came out. Want a drink? Yeah, sure, White Russian. What's your drink, dude? White Russian, thanks. That's right, today we're gonna to be making a White Russian. We just start with a cup of ice. Just gonna start with one and a half ounces of vodka. One ounce of Kahlua. One and a half ounces whole milk or cream or honestly even even soy milk works if that's more to your liking. Stir and enjoy. Cheers. These are so dang good. I happen to be looking at the computer museum, uh, the one in the Netherlands, and they had a vintage computer running a vintage website and uh, they linked to a project called TimeProx. And so that's what we're gonna do today. We're going to set up TimeProx on a Raspberry Pi that will act as a proxy server so that we can browse the internet from 1998 on our vintage computers. And it does this by taking the uh, pages uh, from the Wayback Machine from around 1998, or at least as close as they can get to 1998, and serving that up, but of course stripping away the, the top bar and all of the things that we get in a modern browser whenever we go to the Wayback Machine. Of course, first I'm gonna show you what it does currently on, on this iMac, and then we'll go ahead and set up our Raspberry Pi to run TimeProx, and then I'll go ahead and show you how it runs after we set it up. So let's get started. So here we are on our original iMac, and as you can see, if we try to browse the internet, we get the spinning ball and nothing ever loads. Um, we can stop it and do something like Google, google.com. So if I type in Google, we can see it loads, but like kind of in this really messed up way, we have a broken image. And if we try to search anything, kind of stops working here. We don't really get much of anything. So let's go ahead and set up our proxy server on a Raspberry Pi and come back and we'll try this a little bit later. So here we are on a Raspberry Pi 4 with a clean install of Raspberry Pi OS. And I'm gonna start just by going to the GitHub page for the TimeProx project. Now if you get a chance, definitely go to the author's blog post on how and why he wrote this. I'm linking it right here on screen and I'll also have it in the notes. Now looking at the readme here on the GitHub page, it says simply have Node 12 or later installed. And then it kind of walks us through the instructions on what we're supposed to do. Now, as a person who doesn't do anything <laughs> with web servers, I didn't know what the heck Node 12 was, but uh, I looked it up and it turns out it's uh, Node.js. So I found instructions on how to install Node.js on a Raspberry Pi and uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that now. 
we're going to start by enabling the node source repository by running the following command. We're going to type in curl space dash s capital L space https colon slash slash deb dot node source dot com slash setup underscore 10 dot x space vertical bar space sudo space bash space dash return. Once that repository is enabled, we're going to install Node.js and npm by typing sudo space apt space install space Node.js. And finally, to verify your install, we're just going to type node space dash dash version. And if we get an output like we did here, then we've got it. So now our Raspberry Pi is all ready for us to install TimeProx. We're going to start by going to the GitHub page for TimeProx. And then we're going to go to code and download zip. And that's going to download to our downloads folder here on our Raspberry Pi. Then we'll just go to our downloads folder and extract our zip file. I'm going to go ahead and extract it to my documents folder. I know there's probably a better place to put this, but again, since I'm not super familiar with Linux, I just need it to be a spot where I can find it. And if we navigate to our documents folder, we can see it puts this timeprox-master folder in here, and that has all the files that we need to get this thing running. So in a terminal window, I'm just going to change directory by typing in cd tilde slash documents slash timeprox-master. And then we'll install TimeProx by simply typing npm space install. And once that's installed, to start up our TimeProx server, we'll just go ahead and type npm space start. So it'll give you a little message telling you that it's running on port 3000. So now we can just pop over to our Macintosh and test this out. Okay, so we're back on our iMac, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the um, proxy server for Internet Explorer here. And we're just gonna go up to Edit Preferences. We're gonna go here to uh, Network and Proxies. So we're gonna come here and we're gonna type in our address of our server, and that is port 3000. We're gonna enable that and we're gonna say okay. If we go ahead to say Apple, which we've got a favorite for, we get the old version of apple.com because this is being served from archive.org. Now, of course, we have still some image loading issues, but we can browse around and click on things. And, uh, and yeah, kind of take a look at it. See what Think Different does. <laughs> oh, internet er archive error. I think my favorite thing about this though is when you start it up, it goes to the Apple start page and show it to us like it was 1998, which I love takes us to the Apple Excite start page. We've got all of the things here that you would have seen at this time. And we can kind of browse around. I don't know, let's top stories. Let's see if this takes us somewhere. Yeah. So it looks like this page was cached in September 3rd, 1999, but still we're very close to the era in which you would have been using this computer. And we've got all of these articles. And uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty great. So of course not to be left out, the other major uh, thing to happen in 98 is Windows 98. So here I am on my yeah, not Windows 98 computer over here on uh, my octet of new old machines. Uh, and we're just going to go to Internet Explorer. And oddly enough, 
MSN still kind of loads, <laughs> which is crazy. So of course, just like on the iMac, we're just gonna go up to tools, internet options, connections, LAN settings, and we're gonna say use a proxy server and that address, one, eight, seven. and of course yours will be different depending on your local area network. And port 3000. Okay, so now if I hit the home button, it should be loading it from the Internet Archive. All right, so we still get the error, just like we did on the iMac, um, but our Yahoo should load. Yeah, 1998 Winter Games. <laughs> Um, let's go computers and internet for here. Check out something different than we did. And, ooh, magazines. Cyberculture? Ooh, cyberculture. I'm just interested in what consists of cyberculture. most popular dot com guy man attempts to stay inside for a year with only his internet connection to keep him company hmm maybe check out 2020.com guy <laughs> this is great wow yeah so this is just this guy chatting and wow I've never heard of this this is amazing I'm so glad I came across it um, but yeah this is the kind of things that we can discover using uh, this old uh, internet that was luckily archived for us by archive.org and uh, and still able to work using time procs but yeah, anyway, I hope you liked what you saw. Pretty simple, just using a Raspberry Pi as a proxy server, but um, it makes these machines a lot more like how I remember them from the time. Um, I'm not strictly a vintage gamer. I like all aspects of vintage computing, and so uh, I think the internet being a huge part of it, especially in the late 90s. So anyway, Time Prox gives us that ability to browse the internet as it once was, which is pretty great. So anyway, if you enjoyed uh, this video, go ahead and like and uh, tell a friend and uh, subscribe. Um, but yeah, I appreciate everybody who is watching. I hear lots of great comments and I'm very appreciative for everybody who is taking a look at these videos. So anyway, until next time. See ya.